I'm really excited to get this framing square back to its original or better than original condition. I've been working on it with vinegar. I'm not a tool restoration expert, but I thought I would just kind of start with some of the basic stuff. The <clears throat> square didn't have a protective coating on it. And this past summer, I actually polished it with a polishing wheel. And then I didn't do anything with it and I should have. I'm really sad I didn't because it got left out in the rain a couple of times while we were uh, working on milling our timber frame. And then our tool bag got wet inside of our garage because it's not waterproof yet. And it has rained for a month straight. So I've been wanting to just do something I would say is relaxing. This is my grandpa's framing square. Third generation using this tool. It has a lot of the old features that are gone on the modern framing squares. It has all of the brace dimensions, your rafter cuts. It even has a 1 100th of an inch uh, grid right here, if you wanna be that precise. So this is about where I started. Actually, it was worse. It was worse than this square. The corrosion was just atrocious. So much so that the markings on it were basically illegible. And just vinegar has removed the vast majority of the surface corrosion. There's really only a little bit of what I would call rust on this one. And I can see that taking it out of the vinegar, I need to get something on it quickly here because it's already starting to kind of corrode from being exposed to the oxygen. But down here, let's see, yeah, in this area, I see a little bit of like rust along the heel, a little bit on the blade over here, and it's deep. It's not surface. Now I just need to put some baking soda water to neutralize that acid. I'm worried that the acid is still reacting, so I'm gonna to try to be a little more aggressive with baking soda. Probably need to be quite a bit more aggressive. So I actually have a goal today to not only get this back to a somewhat corrosion-free finish, but I also want to improve it. So we're going to use a little bit of spray paint and try to put some white inside the markings so that they're more legible. And then I got some clear lacquer that will help me to uh, protect the entire finish. I don't know how good of a uh, finish I should expect from the vinegar. I'm, I've never done a lot of this type of stuff before, but I definitely want to do more of it because I have a lot of kind of older tools and I'd like to get them into really good condition. And I know you guys are probably like me, it's kind of therapy. Something that I used to use in a previous business of mine a lot was glass cooktop cleaner. Um, I actually found kind of a secret uh, within the jewelry industry. If you think about how they polish jewelry, you know, they take um, silver, for example, and polish it back up to a nice luster because it too can oxidize over time. I found uh, that they use an extremely fine abrasive. It's very, very fine. The same abrasive can be used on porcelain, things like that. But the cheapest version of it I found is this stuff that they make for glass cooktops. I'm not saying this is how to do this, but there's some deeper uh, spots where the rust has really pitted the metal, like this little eagle, there's a little eagle right there. I just wanna test a little bit of this stuff and see in a small area if I'm actually going to be able to get any kind of uh, desirable result or if I'm just making more work for myself than necessary.
Well, what do you think? I only polished in this small area right here, just a tiny bit. It does seem like it's removing some of the deeper rust that's embedded there, but I see a spot on the back here that's even worse, right here in the heel. And I see some rust kind of along this side too. This area of the square is really busy. It has a lot of features. And I want to, I want to retain a lot of those features so to, to not take off too much material so that I don't end up taking off these really fine features. Just a couple of minutes worth of work here on the heel on this side. I believe this is already corroding again. And I think this is just a reaction to the vinegar. So I wonder what the metal that these tools are made from, if there's just a real heavy propensity to, you know, corrode quickly. I know the acid's probably accelerating that. So right here in this corner is this hundredths of an inch indicator because this inside part of the, the tongue is actually in tenths of an inch. And I'm wanting to save, really make this usable. And these brace measurements inside, I wanna really make those super legible. I think there's a noticeable improvement between here and here, but it's not stark. I know that this product actually has a trace amount of phosphorus, which I believe would be phosphoric acid. But I think the mild abrasive is probably doing the majority of the removal here. Brought my favorite product, something that we use a lot around here. drill and wire brush really made a difference. You can see that eagle pretty clearly now. Really brought out the luster of the metal. There's no arguing, you can see those marks now. They're fantastic. It'll be really exciting if I can get this side to pop. These are the rafter dimensions. And also this inner uh, side here, I believe is in not just 30 seconds, but maybe even 60 fourths of an inch. I'm hoping spots like this, I can get rid of the corrosion. It's kind of pitted in that area. I feel like this square is turning out fantastic. When I polished it this summer, or earlier in the year, I should say, 
I didn't use like an acid to remove a lot of the surface corrosion. And so buffing it, if you want to call it that, with the wire brush yielded a lot more heat and a lot less results. It did not look this good when I worked on it this summer. So I'm really excited. This, this is turning out absolutely wonderful. I picked up a couple of spray paints. One is a Krylon white and also a clear enamel. I've had a lot of people recommend to me and it only makes sense that if we spray this on and then kind of gently wipe the tool, the square, it should leave a little bit of paint in the recessed areas, in theory. Um, I think it takes, definitely gonna take some kind of like a, a strategy. I don't think it's gonna be as simple as spray, wipe, and it looks pretty good. What do you think? Should we give it a test and see if we can maybe get a small area to look good before we do the whole thing? Got this looking pretty good, look. This is basically what I started with. Wow, yeah, that's insane. And that's where we're at now. Wow, looks way better. I'm hoping to just get some white paint in there, let it dry, and then lacquer it, and then I'm pretty much done. I'm trying to think of a better way to do this, but it's definitely working. Yeah. Gotta be kind of careful, because you, if you aren't careful, you kind of rub it right back out of the, out of all the little marks or whatever. I'm trying to think of a really good way to get like the paint off the, the one side, but not on the other side. Like a squeegee almost. So I've got one side basically done. It's not completely dry. And I'm going to accept that there's going to be a little bit of paint on the rest of the surface. But it's definitely very much uh, more visible, all of the markings. And it's not just the luster. If you look here, they kind of blend in. So they're very hard to see, even though it's clean. And the white definitely makes them pop. It's horrifyingly primitive, I guess. But I'm using a piece of electrical tape on a piece of cardboard to kind of just scrape the paint down. And then as a final touch, I'm kind of using the rigidness of the cardboard to just wipe um, kind of the surface to remove the surface paint while leaving everything that's you know, down in those markings. That little eagle, there's barely enough of the eagle left to really um, get him to pop. I know there's these kind of like, um, what are they made of silicone kind of squeegees. Uh, let's see, even recommended using like a windshield wiper blade, which would be perfect because I just threw some away, but they're in the garbage, unfortunately, to kind of squeegee this paint down. had an idea. I don't want to destroy a windshield wiper, but I had a spare garden hose laying around. So I just grabbed a piece of it and sliced it. And it's kind of vinyl-y on the inside. So I'm hoping that this will actually work. I've tried at least three times now to get the paint to sit in these details. I'm going for it. I feel like I've tried with the tools that I have to get the paint to stay in these little markings. And I think this square is quite worn from basically corrosion. It's been pitted and cleaned so many times that the depth of these markings is greatly reduced. And I've given up. I'm gonna try a windshield wiper. It's kind of a ridiculous waste of time and money, but I feel like the square is sentimental. generator ran out of gas. Thankfully my work light stayed on. I don't know. I can't decide if I like that or not. It's definitely not what I thought. 
I would get when I was done. Yes, you can see the marks, but it just looks like a really, really bad paint job. Eh, probably because it is. Well, I think I'm done for tonight. I mean, I feel like, yes, it's more visible, but I feel like it looks better on camera than it does to my eye. Of course, I'm working under LED light, and so it could be affecting my eyes. I don't know. It is nighttime. So this is like a before where you basically can't even read the numbers because the luster of the metal is nearly identical even in the markings areas. And then this is what I ended up with with the white spray paint. Or I might make a part two. If I'm still on part one, then it's a one part video. If this is the end of the video, then this is part one and I'll see you in part two. Well, before I go, maybe let's just do like a before and after. So this is basically where we started earlier tonight and where we ended up. So last night I was working on this square and if you're seeing this, it must be episode number two. I have no idea how much footage I got. I was out here for over four hours. What I got really hung up on was the paint. Um, I did not like how the paint was turning out and I tried maybe five different things and I realized they're all really redneck, but none of them worked the way I wanted it to. I kind of had this vision for how this square was gonna look when I'm done and it wasn't working. I did a little bit of research online this morning to kind of see what, you know, what other people do for this type of thing, and I found that the general uh, strategy seems to be basically to paint and then to sand off lightly the paint that you don't want on the surface for this. So I, I swung by the hardware store and grabbed some 120 and some 220. You know, and I forgot, I was gonna grab our um, sanding block. Wait a second. There's a chance it's here. Well, my memory didn't serve me right. I was thinking that we had one of those rubber sanding blocks here, and that would have worked really well for the sandpaper. Um, but I have these foam blocks, and they're actually pretty rigid because they're pretty old. They're kind of crusty, and I don't know what grit they are. So I don't know if it's the paint or what, but this is basically Ironically, just more money and the same basic problem I was having last night. So I'm able to knock the paint off the surface, but for whatever reason, whether it's temperature or just didn't let the paint dry long enough, I mean, it's been drying for, gosh, an hour and a half. It's supposed to dry in eight minutes. Um, sure seems like all I'm doing is knocking the paint off the lettering, which is obviously what I'm trying not to do. Just give it a light rub to see if maybe I just need to clean it a little bit. Well, that does actually look a lot better. So maybe the sanding, um, you know, um, dust or whatever is kind of cluttering up the, the markings. That actually does look pretty good. So this is kind of what I've been starting with is just a completely covered in white and then lightly sanding it and then just a quick coating of alcohol. I would say it's acceptable. I'm happy with that. I, I can work with that. Um, I think I'll continue and kind of see how this turns out. Well, I think I'm learning that last night I should have maybe just been a little bit more patient. It turns out that I was actually probably doing okay job. I'm not saying it was fantastic. But what I'm seeing 
is that as I clean off the uh, sandpaper residue, that the lettering is actually quite visible. I just didn't realize it. And what I'm realizing now is that the condition of this paint, there's a lot of kind of surface paint here. I'm realizing that it's more of a testament to the condition of the surface of the steel than it is, you know, the ability to sand and remove the paint. I actually would be proud to clear coat that. Since it's so cold in our garage right now, the paint will take a long time to dry on that square. And since I was kind of in the mood and quite a few other tools were damaged when the tool bag got wet, I figured I would just take some time and uh, really give these tools the love they deserve. They've helped us build two timber frames already and we're really hoping that we can keep them in good condition and continue to build some really amazing things with them. Kind of checking on this square. Now I put it on there really thick. See, now it's still wet. So because it's so cold out here and I put the paint on so thick, guess we're gonna have to wait a while. Forgot I actually have one more tool that I need to do and that's our two and a half inch slick. turned out wonderful. Looks great. It was last sharpened in Maine on a Tormac and that's a pretty substantial bevel change. So the honing on this is probably going to take several hours I would think. Maybe if I had a really coarse honing grit I might be able to knock it out in a couple of hours. Hey are you terrorizing the neighborhood or what? What are you doing? Oh is that warm? Huh? Is the hood of the car warm? Thing you're guaranteed to get when you have a cat. It's cat prints on everything you own. Huh, did you hear me? Are you listening to me? Doing whatever you want. That's pretty typical. It's only getting colder out here. In fact, here's some ice <laughs> sitting on the piece of plywood. So I took this inside and I tried to gas Alyssa and Bugaboo out of the RV. <laughs> I'm not proud of that. I feel like the side that I just did turned out better than the side that I did earlier. And again, I think this side here, which is the side that I did earlier, as I clean it up, I feel like the steel is quite a bit uh, more pitted than the opposing side. What I really wanted was for this eagle to show up super clear. It's such a beautiful logo and this is the side we just did. I need to do some cleanup on the edges, make sure those are nice and tidy and then I think we're ready for lacquer.
what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to apply what I learned on this one to the next one. Uh, for example, one thing I noticed is when I put the lacquer, the clear lacquer on, I did not wait long enough for the white paint to cure. And so it wanted to soften and smear the white paint, which really sucks. I think overall, the areas that I really cared about turned out pretty stinking good on this square. So I'm excited to be able to get to use it. I know you folks out there are tool restoration veterans, so this will be not that shocking for you. But I think this square turned out fantastic. Starting out with something that was worse than this square. I don't even know how that's possible. This square is terrible. And ending up with this. What a fantastic result. Alyssa just got a text message from her dad and it turns out that Alyssa's dad has, let me get this straight, her great, great grandpa's framing square. What? So I think we're gonna ask him to send it up. And I, I think it's in about this condition right here. So we'll have to see what it looks like when it arrives. But I think it'll be really cool if we can get Alyssa maybe to get in on one of these tool restoration projects. Thanks for joining me for this tool restoration. I had a lot of fun. It was really satisfying. I wish it was more warm in my workshop, but maybe in the future when we get it dried in, we can have more controlled environment. Till then, I guess I'll just keep gassing out Alyssa and Bugaboo.